Hi everybody, welcome to the second video on how to hear God's voice. So often we pray about something and we want to know what God's response is and we hear nothing. And then we have to very often decide, we're like, well he's saying wait, or well I'll just see if it happens. But all through the scriptures, which is the record of God's relationship with us, we see time and again people came to God and said, blah, 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 and he answers. Now, there's a, there's a way of coming to God and praying. Um, well, we're going to talk about that in the next video. Um, but the, before you even speak to him on an issue, there's a condition that you need to be in if you're going to hear an answer. So sometimes God wants to answer. In fact, I think most of the time, in my experience, he wants to answer but we don't hear the answer because we're not in that place. For years and years and years I prayed and never heard the answers I hear now because I wasn't in the place. And so I want in this video to help us in some ways to get into that place. Now, yes, yes, there are sins and different things like that will keep us from hearing God's voice because he can't have anything to do with sin because it's not on his team, I'm going to say. It's not the way that he wants us to go. Why not? If I'm playing for Manchester United and we're playing against Newcastle United, then I can't have anything to do with getting the ball against my side, okay? Because I, I have an aim and my aim is to win. So if I was to turn around and do an own goal, that's against my aim. But with God, it's even more than that. He does have an aim and his aim is that we will have his character and that we will be, as we were meant to be in the beginning, in relationship with him. So anything that is against relationship with him, he's not going to have. Now, God is pure, God is love, and love is holy. I said in the first video, let's not separate God into little categories. Let's go with what the scriptures say. The scripture says he's love. It says he's holy as well, but his essence is love, and love is holy. Love is righteous. Love is pure. That's why he disciplines us. So he will discipline me to try and correct me and show me how I can go in the way of love, which is who he is. Therefore, because he is love, can't have anything to do with hate. His team, his aim is for me to know him and for me to have love, and for me to have peace, and for me to have patience, and for me to have all the things that he is. So therefore, if I'm doing things against that, he's not going to work with me. He's like, no, that's not, that's not my aim. That's not my character. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's like something that goes so much against your grain that you just can't do it. And that's what sin is to God. It goes so much against his grain. He's never, ever, 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 ever going to encourage me in anything that is not good for me or my relationship with him or him or other people. If I am hurting someone, it's not, he is not going to help me do that. That's why so often as Christians, we'll hear even ministers and other Christians say, you know, we've cut them off because it's what God wants. And God's like, I'm having none of it. You know, we can say to people, well, I'm speaking to you in love, but you're this and you're that and you're the other. God says, I'm not having any of it. Because the Bible says, love your neighbour as you love yourself. Would you like to be cut off? Would you like to be spoken to like that? No, don't do it to anyone else. The Spirit of God will not come upon you to help you do that. He will come upon you to love you and teach you to love other people. Now, you might say, but in a ministry position, I should be able to discipline the congregation. God disciplines in love. James says there is no fear in love because fear has to do with punishment. If you see discipline the same as punishment, then you're twisted in your head because actually that's not how God sees it. To God, discipline is not, okay, I'm going to take this off you and that off you, the way we discipline a child nowadays. To God, discipline is correction and instruction and guidance. So you say to me, so why do these bad things happen? And I think God's disciplining me. And my answer to that is two things. Firstly, things happen as a consequence of my decisions. God allows them because I have free will. Things happen just in life. God brings something good out of them because that's who God is. He's bringing good. He's bringing good. He's bringing good. 
if I make decisions and I have consequences and God allows that to happen, he comes with his discipline in that consequence and guides me, instructs me through it. So the situation is not his discipline, but what he says to me through it is. So God allows life to do what life is going to do and he allows me to do what I am going to do, but he's always there with me in it. How then do I get into a state where I'm able to hear and experience him? Well, we are grounded, what I call grounded. We come from the earth, we go back to the earth. You can touch me, you can see me, you can feel me. And from being a baby, I can touch you, I can eventually see you, I can hear you most of the time. Babies are born into this natural world. But Jesus said, to know God, you have to be born again. And then he went on to say, born of the spirit and of water. So the spirit in the Bible is a symbol of water. In other words, we're born already physically, but from the foundation of the world when he first ever created us, that shift happened when Eve disobeyed him and stepped out of that loving relationship. Because when we love God, we want to obey him. He wants us to obey him. So if I don't obey him, I step out of the loving relationship. It's just, I've stepped out of it. I don't become as aware of him. And Eve didn't. God said you will die. And what he meant was you will die to me. You'll die to me. So you'll live on this earthly plane and you'll think that's all there is and you won't experience me as you could. You won't sense me. You won't know me. So that's why I can pray and then not get an answer, even to the things he wants to answer me about because I am still spiritually dead. And even after you come to know him, it's a growing and living relationship every day it's a decision every day to feed the spirit in other words to be in that place where he can speak to me where I can know him where I can experience him I have to choose that now in the story of the Garden of Eden we see that it was just a natural thing that happened he came and he met with them and he talked with them they were in obedience to him they were in a loving relationship with him it was just happening they disobeyed they stepped out of it Jesus had to come to forgive Jesus had to come so that we can be back in that place. The spirit has come upon us and we can now go, I choose to talk to you. I choose to talk to you. It's like in a marriage or in a friendship, you can choose to talk to the person next to you or you can choose to say, I don't want to talk to you and ignore them. They can be right beside you and you can walk around a whole forest and not even talk to them. The Holy Spirit, it is often been said, is a gentleman. He made gentlemen. He's not going to force himself on you because from the very beginning he gave you free will. So he'll walk beside you and he won't say a word. And you'll walk beside him and you'll never hear him say the word. I said in the first video, sometimes it's not God's talking, but we can't hear him. It's God doesn't talk. There's times in the Bible where it says he did not speak for 400 years. Why? No one was listening. And I said in the first video, to listen is to obey. He will not allow his words not to happen. He will not allow his word to return to him void. So if he's going to speak to me, he's going to have to know, I'm going to hear it, Lord. I want to hear it. I want to obey. So that's the first thing. That's the first way we get ourselves into a situation where we're going to hear his voice, is to say, Lord, I'm sorry for all the times that I have disobeyed you, for all the times that I have not really cared what you thought. Do you know, if you're walking with him and you come up to a situation and you see something and you know he says no, no, that's not for you, don't do it, and you go doing it right then and there just like Eve you die spiritually right then and there he's not going to speak to you very much after that and it isn't even one of my friends used to say you ignore him once and then it's like you've put you've shut the door and then he speaks again and he's knocking the door and you're barring the door with things and you're stopping him coming to you no the bible says I stand at the door and wait it doesn't say I stand at the door and bang it and knock it and try and knock it down I stand at the door and I wait. He isn't waiting for you to open the door. He's not waiting for you to take off the barriers that you've put in front of him and you. He's waiting for you just to say, okay, speak to me, please. I want to obey. Teach me to love you. That's what God's waiting for. The barrier that you think you've put up between him and you is no problem to him. He's God. So you might think, but I've put up this barrier, I've put up that barrier, and that's why I don't hear him. And my word to you is this. He will take the barriers back down if you just let him speak. 
And the way you let him speak is by being his servant. God is the servant king. And even when he comes back for us, people say he's coming back in majesty, and you know, he's coming back and he's going to flash across the sky and all of this stuff. And I'm sure he's going to come back. But he's still a servant when he comes back. He's a king, but he's a servant as well. Because he's coming back for me. He's coming back to take me to be with him. He's coming back out of love for me. He's always serving me. He's always giving to me. He's always looking at me and loving me. He's so incredibly, fantastically wonderful. And he just waits. He just waits and he lets life happen and he lets me happen and he lets me make my mistakes. And I turn around, I'm like, God, I'm so sorry for that mistake. Tell me what to do. And he's like, now you're going to listen to me. Now I can speak to you. So if we want God to speak, then we have to be willing to listen, not just listen, not just hear, obey. It's something that, as I said in the first video, is impossible for us to get ourselves into that state, but he can. So what do we do? We say, Lord, get me into the state where I want to obey. Teach me to love obedience. Teach me to love you. Let me fall in love with you. That's the state we need to be in. Once we're in that state, then we can do the next bit. Now, I said at the start of this video that the next video I do will be on how we pray, but actually it's not gonna be because in this video, I wanted to do all of what I've just talked about and a few other bits and I haven't got to them, but I think this is long enough. I think really what God wants is this video to be stopping here. And the first thing on how to hear God is that you, yes, you need persuasion, but you need to be in the place where you want to obey him. I said it in the first video, but I think it just needs to be reiterated again in this one. Obey him, obey him. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, I don't want your word to return to you void either. Again, the Lord's uh, prayer says, thy will be done. Jesus said, I want this, but you want that. Your will be done. You wanna hear God's voice? I wanna hear God's voice? That's where I need to be. Not, not out of, oh, I don't want to, but I have to be there. But out of, God, you're so wonderful. You're so incredible. And how do we get to that bit? By asking him to fill us with his love for us. Show me your love for me, Lord. Show me your love for me. Show me who you are. Let me fall in love with you, Lord. Let me know you, Lord. I tell you to know him is to love him. There's a Scottish poem that says to know her is to love her. Well, to know God is to love him. Just give him a chance for you to know him. The Bible says be still, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, and know that he is God. That is a key to hearing his voice. Be still and know him. If you know him, you can't help but love him. And as you start to love him, there's no one else you want to obey but him. He's incredible, he's wonderful, he's amazing. He's just absolutely beyond words. If you wanna hear God's voice, please stay with me and look at the next few videos as well. But just spend time today just asking him that you would get to know him more, that you would get to love him more. Take care.